Hello, class. I thought I would take an opportunity to record the record keeping lecture because a number of students missed it, as well as it wasn't one of my best works of presentation. So our outline, we're going to cover the background again, why record keeping is so important, the benefits of good record keeping, as well as describe to you how you use the OSHA 300 log, 300A log, and 301 log, and then we will um, do an exercise together where hopefully I'll make this very clear for you. So OSHA requires record keeping of most all employees. Now, um, if you have a company that has less than 10 employees, you're subject to different record keeping rules. And of course, the record keeping rules are found in 29 CFR 1904. And you can um, click on that particular link there when you have an opportunity to see the regulations. And it describes things like what is a recordable accident, um, what's recordable lost work time, and I'll go through this um, as well. And we watched the video together, and there's the link there to the new OSHA rules, which talks about some of the new requirements. So as far as um, what is a recordable incident on your OSHA log, and when do you pick up the phone and call OSHA, these are two completely separate things. Anytime, of course, you pick up the phone and call OSHA, that goes on your log, but you don't call them every time there's an incident or an illness. Um, fatalities must be reported to OSHA within eight hours. Hospitalization of three or more employees at one time, um, this must be reported to OSHA within eight hours. And within 24 hours, this is a new requirement, um, loss of an eye, amputation, or any other inpatient hospitalizations. And then all other data just except for basic first aid, and there's some descriptions of that, go on your OSHA log. Okay, so we're going to start to talk about record keeping and incident rates and what these incident rates look like. Well, our good rep record keeping gives us non-biased, non-influential data in which um, regulatory agencies such as OSHA or state agencies, public health departments, as well as your company that are, your, itself can make de decisions on how they want to focus their efforts or spend their money. And as you can see here, this is an example from the Bureau of Labor and Statistics. These are um, rates of injuries, so this is the number of cases. Um, you know, a case can make up multiple days and multiple injuries, but this is the number of cases per 100 full-time workers, and that's a basic rate that OSHA uses um, for selected motor vehicle related industries. So this is industries in which um, motor vehicles are either made or parts are manufactured, automotive dealers, um, or services are provided. And as you can see, this data is broken down into a specific industry. And this is an important part of record keeping. Um, it's also an important part of understanding where the company that you will be working in falls within these certain injury and illness rates, not only just based on what the national US average is. So every industry out there has a NAICS code, or North American Industry Classification Code. And it's just like in biology where you have a genus and a species, you can see that um, agriculture is code 11, and mining is code 23, and this would be like our construction, I'm sorry, is code 23. And this would be similar to the genus. And then you can get closer down looking at what that particular company does. And 236115, the second part of that code, tells you that this particular industry falls under construction. And this is new single family housing. 
And you can see other types of construction that are falling underneath this um, code 23. So whether it's healthcare, mining, um, private industry, or government industry, it's all classified by this coding system. So if your um, parents or an uncle owns a company, you can ask them what their classification code, in, code is. This, not, this also goes um, to taxes, which is um, somewhat different, but related in a sense that we try to put like industries together so that we can make some generalizations and some really good comparisons. So where do we get our industry specific rates? Well, we get them from the Bureau of Labor and Statistics. And um, this slide is here to show you that the Bureau of Labor and Statistics is part of the Department of Labor. So it's just another agency under the Department of Labor, such as um, OSHA. OSHA is an agency under the Department of Labor as well. So if you clicked on any one of these links here, you'd be able to get your industry-related um, injury and illness rates, severity rates, lost workday rates, um, as well as fatality rates. And these are used to put emphasis programs in place, see what's working, see what isn't working, and all sorts of different kinds of decisions are made from our data-driven decisions. And so this is an example of a chart that shows you the total recordable cases per 100 full-time workers. And so the reason why OSHA chooses to use per 100 full-time workers is then we can compare an industry with 10,000 workers and we can compare an industry with 100 workers. And so we normalize all of our company-specific data to um, 100 full-time workers, and I'll show you how to do that again, and hopefully it'll be a little bit more clear. So right now, if we looked at all non-fatal occupational injury and illness injury rates, the industry average is 3.2. So um, 3.2 cases are occurring per injury, um, 3.2 cases 3.2 cases, 3.2 injury and illness cases are occurring per 100 full-time workers. And you can see that there's somewhat of a downward trend since 2003. We have a real flat trend here in our days away from work. Um, these are days away from work restricted and transferred versus just our days away from work. And these are just our restricted and transfer rates. And so you can um, get a look at where the data currently is trending. And this is across all industries, but your industry may look different or your company might look different. And you would take a look at this um, over the course of your time working at that employer. We would look at it every six months to a year. So I thought this was kind of interesting because we just saw that um, 3.2 cases per 100 full-time workers is the national average. But look at some of these other high-risk injury industries, and these are the highest-risk industries that are out there. That's the table that I pulled. Um, rope, cordage twine, wire cord, and tire fabric mills have an incident rate of 13.2 times. Um, 13.2 cases per 100 people. And then we have um, hog and pig farming at nine, foundries at eight, ambulance services at eight, police protection at 10, fire protection and nursing up pretty high too. Um, some of the reasons why OSHA puts special emphasis programs in place because for every 100 workers in the police protection industry, 10 of them are being hurt. So that's a pretty high incident rate. We want to get that incident rate as low as possible. We'd like to have just one worker hurt per 100 workers or less than one 
um, meaning that it would be one worker for every 200 workers or one worker injury per so many workers. So we're trying to get our incident rates down. And this is just the way that we're taking a look at them. OK, so what is an incident rate? An incident rate has some unit of measure associated with it. And OSHA uses 100 full-time employers or 100 full-time workers. So an incident rate is just the number of cases within a given time period, and that's usually a year, as a proportion of the number of people in your specific population. And so this down here is the formula that OSHA uses. And I just wrote some figure because something goes in there depending on whether we're calculating a recordable incident rate, a total incident rate, a lost time case rate, or a severity rate. And we'll talk about all those. Um, as we go along. But I think the one that's a little bit challenging is um, where did OSHA get this number? And so I'm going to show you how OSHA got that number. So OSHA believes that if you work 52 weeks a year and we multiply that by 40 hours a week, this means that you work 2,080 hours per year. And then we subtract off of that 80 hours. Which leaves us with 2,000 hours a year is what a full-time employee works in a year on average. And the reason why we subtract off this 80 is because um, most people get a week of vacation and a week of holiday. So that's where we subtract this off. So then we take our 100 workers and we multiply it by each one of those workers working 2,000 hours a year and we come up with this magic figure here. And this number, hours worked by all employees, would be the average number of workers that you have and the number of hours that they work. And you would have this through your um, payroll department. So I hope that makes that a little bit clear. So OSHA and um, the Bureau of Labor and Statistics expresses all of these injury illness, severity, fatality rates as an expression of per 100 full-time workers per year. So this is an example. This is the OSHA 300 log. This is the log that you would fill out when you are keeping track of your records. So this is for your good record keeping. And you can see that you would um, write you check the box if it was a death. You check the box if it was days away from work. Now, you could have an injury that doesn't necessarily have any days away from work. And then you would, um, if the person um, remained at work or came back to work, whether um, they had a number of, in here you'd write their um, transferred or restriction, right? So that's either I got hurt and I, uh, at work, I didn't leave. It's still a recordable injury, although I don't have any recordable days, but I may have some job restriction for the rest of that day. I didn't pick up any 50-pound bags of dog food. Or I was injured. I took three days off of work. Now, we don't count the day that you're injured. So the day I'm injured, whether I go to the hospital or not, if I take three days off, then I'd have three days off from work. And it was an injury. And somewhere else I'd write that it was a musculoskeletal injury. So uh, no death here. I had three days off of work. 
and it was an injury. I guess I shouldn't use an X. I should use a check because I use a check someplace else. But I think you can see where you get the data from. And then these numbers here, our number of cases, which is what we would write down over here, is where we start to collect the data and we compile it and we put it on our summary of work-related injuries and illnesses. So I filled one out here. I filled out a summary for you guys to take a look at from an industry that had 7,440 people. And these 7,440 people worked approximately 10 million hours in a year. So our company, Turn Your Phone Off, LLC, we had total number of cases with days away from work. So we had 30 cases with days away from work. People missed days. How many days did they miss? These 30 cases missed 542 days of work. And of these 30 cases, 113 of them were injuries because remember, just because I missed days away from work, these would be recorded someplace else in a different column. Total number of cases with job restriction or transfer, that was 29. Total number of transfer restricted days was 20. I had 113 types of, in, most of these are injuries and one other illness. And so I would put this information down. Um, I got it from here and I summarized it at the end of the year. I put it on this form and this form goes up on a bulletin board. And this is the form that allows us to then calculate some of these different um, incident rates. And this is where I hope that we can make this a little bit clearer by just putting the data up there. And I'll try to do some um, notation for you on the recorded slide. So our OSHA recordable incident rate describes the number of cases per 100 full-time employees that have been involved in a recordable injury or illness. So this doesn't have anything to do with lost work days. It's just recordable, whether you put it on the log or not. Total incident rate is the number of recordable incidents per 100 full-time workers, right? So these are the same. Lost time case rate is the number of cases where time was lost. So that could be different than the number of total cases. I can be a case, and I am certainly one kind of case, that is sometimes really challenging to understand, and I'm sorry about that. But if I slipped going down the stairs and I went home, it would be counted as um, a work-related injury, and I would write that down on the log. But I wouldn't be a lost time case because if I came to work the next day, I wouldn't have lost any time. You don't start calculating um, days lost until somebody's out of, um, until the start of the next shift. The severity rate looks at the number of lost days. And the DART rate is not only the number of lost days, but these restricted or transferred days as well. OK, so I have our formula. I have our summary of our OSHA log and the four different types of calculations that we're looking for. And so right here where I wrote some figure, that's related to the variable here that you'll fill in the space. So this is our data. So we're going to re we're going to calculate our incident rate, and our incident rate is the number of OSHA recordable cases, and our number of OSHA recordable cases would be 30. plus 55. These are our recordable cases. So that's 85 times 200,000 divided by our 
roughly 10 million hours worked. All right, so if we do the math, Our incident rate is 1.6. The average incident rate was 3.2. We saw this from another slide. So we know that right now, we could say this company is at least below the average. Now, if this company was a construction company, then we'd look at those construction rates specifically versus the overall average. Our lost time case rate, we had Now we usually call it lost work time. Here we would only use the 30. So this is 30 times 200,000. Divided by our 10 million number. Our loss workday case rate is 0.59, pretty low. Now our DART rate, our DART rate is cases with days away restricted or transferred. So we have cases with days away is 30 plus 29. for our restricted or transferred. And that gives us 59 to plug into our calculator. And let's see what we get. Brings it up a little bit higher, huh? 1.6. And finally, our severity rate. And our severity rate looks at our number of lost work days. All these other rates are looking at cases. This is the only time we take a look at our days. So we have 542 days. And we're going to plug this into our equation. And this looks at how bad were our injuries. 30 injuries with 542 lost days um, is significantly different than 30 injuries with 15,000 lost work days. And our severity rate was 10. So every, another way to think of this is for every 100 workers, for every 100 workers in a year, 10 of days are lost to injuries, right? Our severity rate, number of lost work days per 100 workers. For every group of 100 workers that we have in a year, that group of 100 loses 10 days per year. For every group of 100 workers that we have, we have about 1.6 injuries, right, our case rate. Another way of taking a look at the data. So I left a blank sheet there in case you wanted to calculate it. Benefits of good record keeping provides uh, fast facts about safety, although remember this is a lagging indicator. This is what happened last year, as well as it's uh, more reliable for larger companies because they contribute more to the denominator, to the total number of hours worked than um, a smaller company. 
but it helps people focus their efforts or their energy. It gives us a metric to measure and to track over time to take a look at trends, and it can be used um, to hold people accountable to what different injury and incident rates are. You could do this um, shop by shop and group by group, and even if you had a shop with 10 people and a shop with 1,000 people, by normalizing the data back down to 100 full-time workers in a year, or adjusting the data, um, you can compare these rates. So um, when is an injury or an illness considered work-related? If the event or the exposure occurred at work or the illness occurred because of contributing factors related to work. What is reported on your sheet always? Um, death, loss of consciousness, any injury with days away from work, any injury where there's um, restricted work activity or the job has to be modified. Um, anytime there's medical treatment beyond basic first aid and there's a document which describes basic first aid, um, we always um, document needle sticks or cuts from objects that is contaminated with bodily fluids, and this is a violation of our Bloodborne Pathogen Act. We also document certain types of illnesses that are work-related, such as tuberculosis or a standard threshold shift in hearing, which would be a hearing-related um, that you, if you have people in hearing protection, you have a hearing protection program in place. And during the autometric testing, if somebody lost a certain number of decibels in their ability to hear, we would mark that as a case um, on our records, even if the worker did not seek medical attention for it. Um, and then any case which removes workers from a monitoring program. So let's say I don't pass my um, spirometry test the next year and I can't wear a respirator, we would put that down as part of your injury logs. Um, so death within eight hours, all other uh, categories where you have a, um, and what this is, is deaths are reported in eight hours for OSHA. All other categories, you should be filling out the OSHA 301 log, which is the incident and illness log, within seven days. Everything isn't reported to OSHA, as we know. We have that other items within 24 hours, um, three people hospitalized, amputation, loss of an eye, or, um, and I can't remember the last one, but it's on one of the other slides. It shows you that I'm not reading as I'm going along here, huh? Um, lost work days are counted after the injury, so not on the day that it happened, only if I didn't return to work. Um, certain employee information is withheld for, um, in, for certain conditions, such as HIV, hepatitis, and sexually related um, diseases because of an assault that occurred either at work or not at work. So some examples of what is reportable. A cut, a puncture, a bruise, a sprain, an insect bite, dermatitis, blisters, inflammation, silicosis, pneumonicosis, um, tuberculosis, COPD, metal fume fever, poisoning, hearing loss, heat stroke, frostbite, anthrax exposure, exposure to bloodborne pathogens, and tumors. So this is an example of the, another OSHA log, just like I um, gave you, except this one was digitized. The OSHA 301 log is just like the incident and illness report, or the accident report, which you had filled out. It's supposed to be completed within seven days. It usually is linked to some kind of job safety analysis. And it's just a problem-solving tool. Remember, we never want to. Um, Hindsight is always 2020, so we never want to put blame on somebody. And this is an example of what that OSHA 301 log looks like. And you have, um, gave you an example that you have. So in summary, our OSHA incident rate is the total number of cases. Our DART rate is days away and restricted. And our severity rate is the only one when we actually use a count of the number of lost work days. And I certainly hope that that cleared up the information for you. And um, I'm sorry if the lecture was confusing. I certainly get tired of PowerPoint after PowerPoint and thought it would be much easier to just write it out on the board. Um,
but apparently it wasn't. So have a great day.